Something about a, a shoe that had been left behind. Spencer, uh, with the 33 pairs of shoes Mrs. Whitney took with her, I dare say she will be able to survive without one. Yes, ma'am, I, I hope so. Do you by chance know where to reach the Whitneys in Switzerland? No, I must admit that I don't know. Mr. Whitney said that he didn't want any calls. I see. Well, that would be all-inclusive, then. Mrs. Saxon, I hope you don't mind my saying so, but I'm very sorry that you've decided to leave the household. It's kind of you to express the thought. I'm not very happy about the circumstances myself, but there's very little I can do about them, unfortunately. Well, may I offer you some coffee before we leave? Thank you. Yes, I'd like that. Excuse me, Nora. I'm helping Mrs. Saxon pack up a few things. Hello, Miss Fulton. It's surprising you here. Hello, Mrs. Saxon. Please, don't let me interrupt anything. You see, Spencer is an old friend, and I just happened to be passing by, thought I'd drop in just a moment. Perhaps another time, Nora? Oh, surely you don't have to go so soon. Perhaps you join me in a cup of coffee. And then we can go to the studio together. Well, yes, I'd like that very much. As a matter of fact, I've often wanted to talk to you alone, Mrs. Saxon. I wanted to discuss someone that we both care about very much, Mrs. Cavanaugh. Congratulate you guys on a job well done last night. That could have been real tricky, but you handled it well. I'm proud of you both. Chief, thanks a lot for the appreciation, Chief. Well, I give it to you when you deserve it. <laughs> well, it really wasn't much of anything. I mean, we just found out that this guy, Louis Mitchell, was keeping an unlicensed weapon in his bar. What are you talking about? It wasn't much. It's always tough when you're looking down the barrel of a pistol. I shudder to think this guy, Mitchell, might have uh, shot you. Anyway, ballistics say this gun is the same one used in the Jefferson Street holdup, so obviously Mitchell is the man. All right. Looks like it was a good night for two clients. And that was a long night, too, so, uh, why don't you guys go home and sack out for a while? <sighs> okay. Uh, I think you better really, uh, impress that on my pal. He's the one who's been sick lately. Nobody you know, asked you anything, Stoner. Actually, there's something that I'd like to look into before I go home. What? What's up? Well, the other day, I got some information about, uh, Nora Fulton. She's Nicole Cavanaugh's secretary. Yeah, what about her? Well, apparently, she had a relationship with Gunther Wagner at one time. In fact, they both uh, did domestic work in the same household. Apparently, that was about two years ago. That's interesting, but I don't think it's particularly significant. Well, maybe not, but since we don't know very much about Gunther's past, it might be worth looking into. If you can stay away, go ahead. Check it out. Thanks a lot, Chief. Thanks. Hey, listen. Thanks again last night. I appreciate it. <sighs> Chief, are you okay? I mean, uh, did you uh, hit the lottery or something? No. What are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> well, you, you seem to be in such a good mood this morning. What do you mean, a good mood? I'm always in a good mood. <laughs> um, might this have something to do with that certain very beautiful young blonde woman I saw you with yesterday? It's nice to be here with friends. Why, thank you. It's nice for me, too. Mike left the office so early this morning that if it weren't for you, I'd be having breakfast alone. Oh, well, I'm sure you'd be with someone. I mean, it seems that you have a lot of friends here, don't you? I mean, you're very well known in Monticello. Oh, well, I've, I've lived and worked here for so long, my goodness. <laughs> I'm bound to know a lot of people. I wish I really belonged in this city, or, or any city for that matter. I have very few friends here. Well, you know, that's really all you need. If you can count 
Just a few good friends from among all the people that you know, you can consider yourself lucky. Oh, well, I do. I mean, I'm very grateful for the friendships I have here in Monticello. It's just that my circle of friends have diminished since the acting group I was in left town. Oh, yes. Um, you were with them for quite some time, weren't you? Oh, yes. As a matter of fact, I was supposed to play the lead in our last production. Except I, um, suddenly got sick and I had to leave the company. Um, Jinx, would you mind telling me what was your illness? Oh, nothing serious. Just fatal. What I mean is, I had hypertension, which was brought on by stress. And I had a lot of it at that period. Oh, it must have been very difficult for you, hmm? Here and there. Anyway, the producer decided to move the company to Chicago, so I lost my role and uh, a few very important relationships. I was very depressed for a while. But then I've made new friends here that have been very kind and supportive, like you and uh, Miles and Nicole. And Derek, hmm? Yes, and Derek. Mike and I have known him ever since he moved to Monticello. He's really such a fine man. And nothing would please us more than to see him happy. Maybe you should warn him away from me. Hmm? Warn him up? <laughs> what? My goodness, I think he's rather attracted to you already. Why should we warn him away from you? Well, that's the trouble. You see, I... I think he's getting a little too serious with me. And I don't think that's a good idea. What? Oh. You mean you don't feel the same? No, no, it's not that. It's just that I'm not a forever person, Nancy. I never will be. Mrs. Saxon? Thank you. Thank you. I hope you won't be too late for work this morning, Nora. No, I don't punch a time clock, you know. Spencer, could I just have a spot of cream, if you will? Sufficient? Just right, thank you. <clears throat> Perhaps you'd like some coffee cake, Mrs. Saxon. Oh, yes, thank you. Oh, I'll just help myself if I want to, thank you. Well, I'll put your luggage in the car while you finish your coffee, Mrs. Saxon. Thank you so much, Spencer. You've been a great help to this household. That's nice to hear. Have you known him long? No, not long. He's certainly a great improvement over the last man my nephew hired. That was a most unfortunate choice. Oh, really? Yes, but perhaps it's best not to go into that. Now, you said something about wanting to discuss Nicole Cavanaugh. I trust there's nothing wrong. That depends on your point of view. But then perhaps I'd better not discuss it at all. As you wish. Well, um, I know that you're very close to Mrs. Cavanaugh. You've known her a long time, haven't you? Yes. You're very fond of her, aren't you? Oh, very. And I like her so much myself so that I feel that I can confide in you out of a feeling of mutual fondness for her. Mm-hmm. Do you know Dr. Cavanaugh's office nurse, Barbara? I don't believe I do, no. Please, don't repeat what I'm going to tell you to anyone. I'd hate it if she could lose her job over me. I really would. My dear girl, a preface like that can mean only one of two things. Either you are going to announce the end of the world, or a bit of idle gossip. I'm not sure I want to hear either. This is not idle gossip. This is the truth. And it's very disturbing. That's why I feel like I have to share it with someone. If you must, then do. Well, <clears throat> I had a friendly lunch with Barbara yesterday. She's inclined to talk freely, if you know what I mean. And she told me that Dr. Cavanaugh is fooling around with one of his patients. I believe you know who it is. You met her at the Cavanaugh's Christmas party, the young actress, Jinx Avery. That's a shocking lie. <sighs> no, she said there's no doubt about it. She saw it with her own eyes. She accidentally walked into the room, and there they were. I was terribly upset when I heard about it. That was very wrong of that girl to tell you that, Miss Fulton. 
first of all, is a falsehood. And although your concern, Mrs. Kavanaugh, is commendable, I don't think you're doing her a service by repeating it to me or to anyone else. That's the way rumors spread. <laughs> Believe me, I know. Having spent almost 20 years of my life in Washington, D.C., I'm something of a connoisseur about scandal and rumor. I've seen it destroy lives and careers. No. The only way to fight gossip is to ignore it. And that's exactly what I'm going to do in this case. I would advise you to do the same. I would never say anything that would be harmful to the Kavanaugh's. I just couldn't carry this burden alone anymore. Ladies, if you're ready to leave, I'll take you anywhere you'd like to go. We asked a thousand doctors if they were strong. Hi, Miss Abercrombie. We know you went there that night, and your passion and your anger caused you to brutally bludgeon him with a brass candlestick holder. Oh, don't cry now. Tears won't help you. We're not impressed. Oh, but I am. That was very good. What case are you working on? Oh, uh, well, it, uh, it, it's not a case. It, it, it's a part in a, in a play. Uh, it, she's more to be pitied than usual for doing it at the acting class tonight. And what role are you playing? I'm the villain. Of course. Well, you don't think it's going to ruin my image, do you? <laughs> oh, Dee Dee, I'm in real trouble. I told Mitzi I'd be ready to do this tonight. And, with Gavin Wiley's case and everything else, I haven't had time to do anything about it. Hey, oh, hi, oh, everybody. Oh, hi, Kelvin. Uh, if you're about to ask me to leave, I am here on business. How you doing, Clint? Oh, fine, oh, what's up? Well, I, uh, I just thought you might be interested in something that Tyler found out last night. Great, what is it? Well, it turns out that, uh, Nora Fulton, who, uh, is Nicole Kavanaugh's secretary, is an old girlfriend of none other than... Ta-da, Mr. Gunther Wagner. Well, I didn't expect anybody to jump up and down, but I thought you'd uh, at least show some mild interest. Uh huh, in what? Uh, his mind is on acting classes. Acting? Oh, it's wonderful, really. I'm having a good time here. You ought to try it. <laughs> Thanks, but uh, I think one performer in the family is enough. Oh, so his play opened in New York last night. It turns out it's going to be a hit. As a matter of fact, I have got a copy of the Rave Review. Great! Ah, oh, so... How about that? Star is a star. Congratulations. Now, let me see that. Wow, New York, Broadway. Star Wilson lives up to her name. Uh, bright young talent, be seeing a lot of her. Yeah, it looks like Star won't be back to Monticello for a while. I guess that solves the problem between you two. I'm sorry. Uh, that was really ghost. Calvin, I apologize. Uh, Dee Dee, uh, I think it's time we made an exit. Is that why you came by here, Calvin, to uh, tell me about your wife's success? No, Dee Dee. I came by here to ask you about you and Julius. I figured by now you must have made some decision about whether you're going to say yes or no. Well, Julius is moving to Chicago, so he needed an answer right away. Chicago? I see. <clears throat> he got a terrific new job. Lots of prestige, lots of money. Mm -hmm. But since I don't want to leave Monticello, I had to tell him no. No? You know, that's the first time I think I've been glad to hear you say no. Well, it's just a rehearsal hall now, but eventually it's going to be a first-rate theater. Let's wait and see. Oh, I do love your positive thinking, Jim. Well, I know of the theater. You have the Whitney Dance Theater. I mean, it's just closed up right now, going to waste. Oh, but Jody, that'll be out of the question. I mean, the rent on the Whitney, I mean, it'll be astronomical. Oh, you never can tell. Once we get things organized here, then we get a little exposure from WMON TV. Patron Saints of the Arts are going to be banging on that door, just begging to give us money. And then we'll rent the Whitney. As you can tell, I'm rather confident about the situation. 
Well, it is the only theater in town. Well, don't pin your hopes too high. Even if you had the money. If the Whitney's even figured out that you knew Jody and me, there's no way they'd rent that place to you. Huh. It's too early to worry about it anyway. Yeah, you don't even have a company yet. What do you mean? We've got the nucleus of one. I mean, it's a great beginning. We've got me as a the humble producer. <laughs> and we've got Hector. He's a great stage manager and set designer and electrician. And we've got the acting company. And we've got Jinx. And we've got Mitzi. We've got Kelly. And we've got uh, the lovely Valerie Bryson. Uh, now, wait a minute. I repeat, we have the lovely Valerie Bryson and the adorable Jody Travis. Now, all we need is uh, a director. Don't count on it, Jim. <laughs> My next job may be making license plates. Would you stop that, please? Sorry, honey, it's just a joke. Oh, it didn't make me laugh. Mm. Oh, mm. Come in. Morning, folks. Morning. Good Lord, our prayers are answered. Our character, man. How do you do? Come right on in, sir. I don't even know if you know how to act, but you are it. You are exactly what we're looking for. Uh, not quite. Uh, my name's Harry Crawford. I'm looking for a uh, Mr. Diedrichson. Call me Jim. Oh. How you do, Harry? You know, despite what everybody thinks, the theater world is not populated with people under 30 years old. Every repertory company has to have character actors. People with authority, wisdom, experience. I hate to see 20-year-old kids trying to play 50-year-olds. Welcome to the theater, Harry. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't want to be an actor, uh, Mr. Diedrichson. Uh, I have a good job. Oh, well, what kind of work are you in? I'm with the sheriff's office, and I just dropped by to uh, deliver this. What is it? It's an eviction notice from the landlord for non-payment of rent. Police Department. I assume you have identification, Mr. Tyler. You betcha. Well, then why didn't you show it to me at once? I thought that was customary. Oh, it is. But uh, actually, this is just an unofficial visit. I just wanted to ask you some questions about a man who I think used to be a friend of yours. His name was Gunther Wagner. You did know Gunther, didn't you? Uh, fairly well, yes. I don't think I can tell you anything that will be helpful, though. Well, I have to ask to find out, don't I? Well, then ask, if you must, but please don't waste my time. I'm, I'm working here, you know? Oh, I'm sure that's true. Really, I just wanted some information on one specific detail. You see, Gunther used to mention a girlfriend named Roxanne. I've never known anyone by that name. <laughs> Look, I don't want to deceive you, Miss Fulton, but uh, Spencer Varney told me that Roxanne was Gunther's pet name for you. All right, I suppose you'll find out, eventually. That is what you do, isn't it? Find out things. Find out what? Gunther hated the name Nora. So he called me Roxanne. He heard it in a movie or something. Listen, I don't think this can be of any interest to you. Well, we're interested in information about anybody who knew Gunther. Did Gunther Wagner visit you in the mental hospital? Please, no, wait a minute. You cannot tell anybody that, all right? It was a long time ago. When was the last time you saw Gunther? Um, uh, about a year before he died. Now, that's the truth. When was the last time you heard from him? Uh, well, when I, when I got out of the hospital, I tried to find him. And he wrote me a letter. He told me that he was going to leave his job at the Whitney's. And he was going to settle in the Caribbean forever. What? You still have that letter? Um, 
Yes? Listen, Mr. Tyler, I'll make a deal with you. If you keep quiet about me, I'll let you see the letter. It's a deal. <laughs> 